<laughs> what was that last yeah. part? That, that, that's got some girth to it. Yeah, it does got that's girth to it. It has length. Oh, no, it has length to it. Well, yeah. welcome back to another episode of Running the Light Pod. Uh, Frankie, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. Beautiful day out here in Wichita, Kansas. We are doing great. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing fantastic. Phenomenal. Super califragilistic espialidocious. Some say I have a sunshine over me. Yeah, I feel we like... We actually have one in studio right now. <laughs> DJ, sunshine. Hi. <laughs> we don't get a round of applause? We don't get a round of fucking applause, Jacob? <laughs> DJ Sunshine. DJ Sunshine. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for joining us here in the studio, the Commerce Club Studio downtown Wichita, man. At the National. At the National. Yeah. Two separate things. You know what I mean? Make sure you don't fuck that up. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I'm glad that you came down here, man. Um, I've been I've been doing Sunshine for a few years now. I think the first time I met was at Rain. Yeah. I think maybe. I tried to hook my homegirl up with him at Rain. And then I just tried to hook up with him. I was like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> he got up on a table and he started singing uh, Tennessee Whiskey. And I was like, yeah, I'm not getting you his number. If anyone gets his number, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Club Rain is in, or it's, it's, I don't know if it's Club Rain, but. It's a Rain Bistro and Lounge now. Yeah. Do they serve food there? Yeah. yeah. Dude, they oh, got well, Sunday brunches that are crazy. Food, really? Yeah. I swear, dude. Man, their Sunday the brunches go. It up, huh? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it a gay bar or yeah, is it just the yeah. bars that the gays are at? No, it, it's a gay bar. It's a gay bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a gay bar. Um, it's in the Midwest, you can't really tell that they're gay bars unless they're like draped in rainbow and shit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's uh, advertised as a gay bar. Yeah. Shout out to gays. We love y'all. Yep. X, Y, we love you too. I think my biological dad's like half gay. I don't know what that means, but. Hey, his daughter's one sixth of it. His dad's half gay. There you my, go. My man's got all kinds of fractions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm diverse. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, will you, will you say something to the people so we know you're alive? Yes, I'm alive. All right. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're not holding him hostage in here. He actually enjoys being here. Yeah, he enjoys being here. He loves us. What's with the pile of canned food? Then? <laughs> <laughs> in the corner yeah. with the blanket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the help me sign for? Yeah. <laughs> we'll produce for food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that was when I met you. That was probably, uh, like I said, a few years ago. How long have you been DJing like out and as a as a as a job, you know what I mean. Uh, oh when boy. did when did it leave the basement? Well, fuck it. Let's start off. When did you first buy anything to like get involved in DJing? So I moved here to Wichita about five and a half years ago. Okay. From where? From Arizona. Mm. Uh, Sunshine. Prior to that, I hadn't done much in like the club scene because I was eighteen, so right. it wasn't. I got a job once I moved out here at Twin Peaks. Hated it. Quit that. Found a job hosting karaoke off of a uh, Craigslist. Nice. Damn. And uh, Shout out Craigslist. I started blowing up that way. Like people were enjoying my singing and my hosting abilities. And uh, after about a year and a half of doing that, I bought the company from from the guys that ran it. Wow. Uh, I still own it. Still run it. Um, I have employees that host under me and whatnot now. Oh, but shit. I've I've stepped away from karaoke uh, because like. Doing the club scene and, and being involved in the karaoke scene, I got to meet a lot of DJs like Marco Biotics and Caretaker and people like that. Oh, and yeah. <clears throat> they, they fascinated me, and I really enjoyed what they did. So I was like, oh, let me get a DJ table and let me try this. And I found what I was passionate about. And Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you've got an ear for it for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, dude, hell of a singer. I shit you not. Like, he was hosting the karaoke at Rain. But then he got on the mic and just like it was no longer a karaoke. What's your go-to karaoke? Uh, the one that people like the most that I do is Tennessee whiskey. Dude, he kills. He kills Tennessee whiskey, bro. I swear to God, he kills. And it almost seems like cliche for people to do Tennessee whiskey. Yeah, it's nah, nah. nah. He, dude, he's got that soul. Yeah, we play. won't play it right now. No, what? no we actually won't. We'll get, we got copyrighted already once. So yeah, we, we got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I didn't know. I knew that you. Were the DJ at the rain doing karaoke? I didn't know that you actually owned a karaoke company. Yeah, I'm I mean, as a mogul out here, people. I own DJ Sunshine Entertainment. There you so go. We do we do private parties, we do weddings, and we do karaoke. So like they had the uh, anime convention at the Hyatt, mm. I think, is over off of a uh, Waco, and they had me both DJ and host karaoke for that event. That's got to be a good deal when you can do. That's why I kind of like being like an MC and a comic is because like we I can do the I can either host the event, get brought on as a comic or do both. You know what I mean? And a lot of times when you're the host as a comic, you're going to be expected to you're do, do time. anyway. But a lot of people we are going to do time. Hopefully not. Just kidding. Um, 
No, a lot of times though, yeah, because like I used to see a couple people that would do like MC events around here, and they would just be an MC, kind of get the crowd pumped up a little bit, and just kind of get into doing both. So that's dope that you're able to just kind of be multifaceted with it. Yeah, and and I put on multiple shows. Like I was telling you, the last Tuesday of every month, I put on a, a showcase at Kirby's, and there are going to be times where I don't perform, and times that I do perform, and either way, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, yeah. Cur it's Kirby's uh, Beer Store here in Wichita, Kansas, out by WSU. It's a pretty good time. They have, <laughs> but well, now that the weather's getting nicer, they do they do some like food open mics, comedy open mics, where a lot of the comedians around town collaborate, bring some food in, and uh, then we have comedy on the outside stage, which I, I just love an outside stage. Me and Eric were there last time, and it went to shit. <laughs> it wouldn't even it didn't even go to shit. Analia just started. It was just hot. It was just hot. I took my kid, which. Don't fucking judge me. Yeah, but nah. I took my kid. But it was just a hot day. Yeah, it was too hot. Um, she started crying because I figured she like kind of knows you well enough, or at least for like five minutes, just relax. Yeah. Oh, she started screaming immediately. No, it was and it was like a minute in. It was cool. It was cool because I was yeah. chilling and I was up front. I was like, you can just watch your dad. You know what I mean? We're gonna chill. And then yeah, I mean, I could I looked at her and she's just red hot, and I was like, oh bro, we're fucked. And it was like a hundred and two. Yeah, it was. It was terrible. It was so hot that people couldn't even like really laugh. Like I, like I was there and I was like, I don't even care. About I don't care this. about this. I didn't want to perform. I, I got the mic and I'm like, I think I'm done. Yeah, literally. I don't want to do this. Uh, and so then she started crying. There's, I have two funny ass videos of him, of, of Frankie carrying her, but she's like upside down, yeah, she screaming. Wouldn't, yeah, she. And wouldn't. he has no idea how to like, dude. She was for her. Yeah, she was, dude. She was trying to like just crawl out, and I was trying to hold her and not <laughs> upset her, but she's so hot, so upset because, I mean, we do know each other. You know what I mean? I've been mm -hmm. around, but like she's, I mean. Hot, yeah. She just wants to get out of there yeah. and get, get in your yep. arms. It was a mess. Anyways, that's a quick little Kirby story. <laughs> um, so, with you said you didn't, you moved from Arizona and you started DJing outside of Kirby's. What is some other spots around town? Because you do a lot of work. You, yeah. You're a pretty busy guy around town. Um, what's the easiest ways to catch you out? Uh, every Monday. So tonight, I. Um I'm at Revolution Lounge. Mm -hmm. I spin there from 10 to 1.30. I do the first Saturday of every month at XY. Uh, I'm a frequent player at Tribal Roots. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I travel a bit. Uh, I go to Oklahoma City once a month to play at an after-hours club called Flux. And then um, I, I do some of the Nocturnal by Nature stuff as well. Right, yeah. yeah. And that's what I was going to say. I've seen you do some of the Nocturnal by Nature stuff. That's ran by our buddy, Will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I knew that uh, of a lot of the people that are not house DJs, you know what I mean? But you yeah. do have consistent work at <clears throat> Rev, at XY. It's, X, shout out XY. I mean, we've had many a, a good time there. Me and Kevin have used to, uh, Kevin Page, and I used to uh, host a Don't Tell Mom comedy comedy show. It's like a, actually it was like a variety show. But XY is always a really good room too. And my, especially for the style of music that you do, man, it, it bangs. I don't know if you remember, but my band played for you guys one time. Was that Ghost Town? That was a riot nurse. Riot nurse. Okay, I think that was was I there, or I think that might have been one of the times that we had we had switched hosts. Kevin was hosting with somebody else, maybe. But maybe. yeah, I was gonna get into that too. You are in a band. While I was peeping through the Facebook, I knew you. I know you're no a singer. Long, no Dude's longer creeping. in a band. He's no creeping. longer in a band. No longer in a band. But when uh, great guys, and <clears throat> it just got to the point where you know we were all going in different directions creatively. Mm -hmm. But we, we that, got an EP out. Yeah, hey. You know? That just sounds like a lot to manage, too. Running karaoke, being a DJ, being a bookable DJ, and being in a band. Yeah. I mean, you got to be spread pretty fucking thin. Yeah. It's um, it's a lot of work, but, you know, it makes me happy. And, and if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing anything, really. Like, I do production aside from DJing right now. So at this point, I do production... Uh, and then I, I set up the karaoke equipment for my hosts, and then I also DJ myself. So my day job is flexible because mm -hmm. I just sit at my computer and I produce. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. He is actually uh, DJ Sunshine. I'm, we, we got him in here today because this will be this will be released on March 20th. And the following Friday, not, not the 22nd, but March 29th, Final Friday, we will be at Tribal Roots. All three of us will be at Tribal Roots. Eric and I are going to do the live podcast. We're going to have comedy, music, magic. Sam is going to... DJ Sunshine is going to close out the motherfucking show. Actually, no, Tommy's going to close because you yeah. got to get to... I have to DJ at XY. Yeah, yeah see, busy man, busy man. But we did want to bring him up here and shout that out because we are going to do 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some work together. The first time that I'm booking him to actually be on a on a show with us. The first time that we did the Tribal Roots comedy show that was uh, put on by Dan the Man, uh, you were the DJ there. Yeah, I did the I did the sound effects during the performances. Yeah, I think there was a couple of farts that he put on there. Sure did farts yeah. with reverb. Yeah, he, sure. yeah, he put yeah. A, he did. He was like, I remember it, I got off stage and he was like, bro, I got a fart with reverb on it. Can I use it? And I was like, go go fucking crazy with that. I thought a couple of farts off on stage. Nobody even could tell. They thought it was just a part of the show. <laughs> you gotta fart sometimes, bro. Sometimes you do. Yeah, your stomach. Now, actually. Hey, chill out, chill out, chill out, bro. It was Taco Bell for lunch, man. You know what it is. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, we're talking about the Tribal Roots show. But, as we've been doing every fucking podcast through March, Eric and I just came off of another weekend. In Kansas City. It was so... Shout out Adam Cook and uh, Mini Bar in KC. It was a... Uh... Fucking blast! Yeah, that show. The the it's an upstairs, it's a bottom and an upstairs bar. The bottom is like a normal bar. Upstairs, that's where they do uh, comedy, concerts, all sorts of things. Apparently, yeah. It's and a, uh, it's a dope room. Adam started the night. He had two guest spots. I wish I could remember the name, but I'm awful with names. And then it was you, and then me, and then a feature, and then a headliner. Yeah. But when I say we are on a roll, yeah. It was Dustin Slints and Curtis Braxton, I believe, with the just, feature and headliners. The, the feature and the headliners after us. But yeah, we, dude, it is starting to feel like we are the Hardy Boys in 07. No. No? Hardy Boys in 08? No. Hardy they're, Boys they're, in 04. They already separated. There you go. That's a little more like it. Hardy, we, were, we were the Hardy Boys in 04. <laughs> the Don't the Hardy 90s. Boys like solve mysteries and shit? Who, oh. Do they? He's talking about the book. Oh, yeah, there's shit. A book. Yeah, yeah, he's a reader. There's books. Yeah, I'm okay. A, I'm retarded. Okay, so holy me. shit. <laughs> Let me let me know you're fucking smarter than us, bro. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> we're talking about the WWE. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking about we're talking champions. about we're okay. literally talking Matt about Matt and Jeff Hardy. <laughs> Matt and Jeff Hardy, and he's like, "You guys read? <laughs> you, you, you want to be? A, <laughs> I'm a karaoke this. DJ, and I run a, a a book club. So what's up? Yeah, <laughs> he owns the library. Yeah, <laughs> the library across the street, fool. <laughs> Um, nah, yeah, it's starting to solve the mysteries. What are these? <laughs> the Scooby Gang? Yeah, we're, we're fucking sleuths out here. Detective Eric, downtown Eric. In downtown the cut. Eric. Like, y'all talk about there is a book, but it's straight up the reason why I know about the Hardy Boys is from an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia when uh, Mac and Charlie are trying to solve a murder and they argue about which Hardy Boy they are. <laughs> That's funny as hell. Yeah. That is funny. No, nah, we, were, we were talking about the legendary tag team duo of, of Jeff and Matt Hardy. Um, we, so a lot of the times, we used to go back and forth, but I really like pause. I really like leading it. I like I like leading. I don't know how to say this without Who's top or bottom? Gay. Yeah. I, <laughs> we go back and forth. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like how I can say this without being gay. Like I like I like I like he, he, I like <laughs> preceding Eric, okay? I like to go first and then let Eric follow me. Mm. Even that sounds a little Cap. sus. Mm. Even that sounds Holy a little bit sus. I don't know how to <laughs> <laughs> Nah. Um it really feels like I'm just lobbing a ball off the fucking backboard and letting Eric come in and just slam it. God damn. Any <laughs> man, we're just. I'm gonna take a lap. I'm gonna take a lap. <laughs> we'll be right back. It gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> it gets worse the more we try to not make it gay. Yeah, but it has been uh, really, really good. The KC show was again just more cement to to the foundation that mm. we're getting. Man, more bricks. Uh, I don't know. Did that seem necessary right there? <laughs> <laughs> um, take away one of the cans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Give him a give him a give yeah. him a uh, microwave dinner. <laughs> Those hungry man dinners. Yeah. The fucking banquet Salisbury steaks. <laughs> those those kind of slap. Yeah, I grew up on those. Those are dog yeah. food. I don't even... Those, those are fucking sick. Yeah. I've had one. I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever had. Uh, I don't know. I ate prison food. I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just built different. I'm just built really bad. <laughs> nah, um, it was a really good show. It was... Uh, th that would be my third time doing the mini bar and Eric's first time, but... Dude, you wouldn't know it, motherfucking. I'm gassing my homie up right now, but he went up there and just fucking had a home run derby. It was, yeah, grand slam. Yeah, it was insane. It just felt. It feels. This is probably like super cliche. It feels so like. Ah, I don't even know. It's fun. Yeah, it's just so much. Cause there was a while. I mean, when I first started, it was so much fun. I was getting booked almost every weekend. It was a lot of fun, and then I hit a little bit of a spell when my ex got pregnant with our kid, and then I stopped for a little bit, and then coming back. I lost the creativity and I lost that touch and I couldn't yeah. find the rhythm. Yeah. Oh, the rhythm is all the way back. Yeah. It's so much. I laugh on stage with the crowd. And dude, 
I have tendencies on stage, and I gra- I'll grab the mic, and I'll palm it. I'll just, like, grab it. This When you know I do that, it's... Yeah. It is really funny, because, like, you could tell... I'm in. People have, like... You know what I mean? It's like it's like Tiger in the red polo. You know you're about to see some shit. When Eric, Eric will be, you know, having one hand out and describing things or whatever, when he goes, like... Oof. When he does that, I know he's fucking It's morphin in. time. It's morphin time. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, cuz. <laughs> um, and, and I think that, like, with creative people... <clears throat> you have to get into like a flow state. So when I do like long show, so so uh, when I do like tribal roots, I get like an hour. Right? Yeah, and so I have to be ready to go hitting with bangers from the jump mm-hmm. because I only have an hour. Right. right? But when I'm doing shows like X Y, where I'm there for four hours and I'm DJing constantly for four hours, like you have to find a flow state where you can kind of creatively tune in. And everything else doesn't matter where you can't fuck up. Like, <clears throat> I'll, I'll start, and I'd say for the first 30 minutes or so, I'm finding that groove mm-hmm. where I'm really trying to get into my flow state. And once you hit that, it, you're just on a roll for the, rest, for the rest of the night. And it sounds like it's similar with comedy where you get into a rhythm with, with comedy and figuring out your audience and figuring out what they laugh at and, you know, harnessing that and pulling from your bank of jokes that would hit with this crowd and just knowing those things to say is kind of like fi- finding that flow state. Yeah. And so creatively, it's it's interesting how that works. I do like having on just on that topic. I do like having cuz I I I vary between doing like 10 to 30 minutes. I think the longest that I've ever done is 45. And that's a long time to just be talking. Um but I feel like the 25 30 minute mark is perfect at least at the level that I'm at right now because it's I have enough time to engage in the chess match with the crowd you know what I mean like some of the shit that I say isn't gonna hit some of it does but you know when like you 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 feel the pullback and you feel that they're kind of like all right now they're the crowd kind of has a little, a little bit of a they're not fucking with you right. you got to go and like move your pawns around to get them back into a position do you find something similar like that ever like the ebb and flow of you and the crowd the relationship you know what i mean that's like a symbiotic relationship between you and the crowd 100 uh so like when i do <clears throat> when i do like the tribal roots show oh, oftentimes yeah. when they book me they book me for playing house mm-hmm. like and that's what i specialize in because that's what i produce and that's what i look for the most mm-hmm. but i can do top 40 i can do rap and r&b and pop and drum and bass and dubstep and techno and i can i can do all genres but finding the right genre to play at that certain time is tricky, and you have to read the audience. So, like, if I if I show up at X Y and I immediately start with hard techno, nobody's gonna like that. Yeah, <clears throat> people aren't gonna dance, and they're not gonna get on the dance floor. They need like they need some liquid courage to dance to something like that. So you have to play stuff that's really easy to sing along to or to dance to like line dance is a timber by kesha and yeah yeah i can open with that any day and it is a great song shout out kesha shout out pitbull yeah (laughs) shout out people a fucking dance floor with that song yeah yeah and then you know as the night goes on i can i can switch into stuff that i maybe i want to play that i think they'll like yeah yeah now you can always kind of tell like you reveal like personality, I think through a set. I mean, anybody does. You know yeah. what I mean? Like us, we're literally talking. So you're gonna find out personal shit or like our views on politics or like certain trends or whatever's going on right now. And so you kind of like get to know the personality of somebody. Um, I think that translate like too. Like you said, like you could start off with something else, but then you 30 minutes in ease into something that's a little bit more like, all right, I got y'all a little bit more comfortable right now. Like watch this. I've been waiting to put this motherfucker out here. Yeah. What's one of your favorite songs that in the last year? I would say because if, if I said one of your favorite songs to mix up and like drop on a on a set, but let's talk about current. In the last year, what song have you put out that's just like never fails? Like a, a song that you've mixed from current, if you have, that just never fails. And is it Yeah Glow by Glorilla? Is it Ice Spice? Yeah, is it Ice Spice? <laughs> <laughs> I well, I mean, something that I made. Yeah. Um, I remixed "Fight for Your Right" by the Beastie Boys, and I turned Ooh. it into techno. Oh yeah, we got to hear that. I yes. got to hear that, that song, on Friday. That song fucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it it never it never fails. Yeah. It, it it every time I've played it, I've had people yelling it 
alongside and and, Damn, it, and the bass in that song fucking yeah it's and it's just that song smacks i'm so excited for next friday yeah. the, the final friday show is going to be so awesome man um and i get to drop two unreleased tracks i was just about to say that too because we spoke a little bit outside but before we came into the studio so march 29th is the day of the final friday show that we will all have at uh tribal roots downtown but I asked him, I was like, is there anything that you want me to bring up? You know what I mean? Do you have anything that you want to prepare the people for? And the same day that you get to see him live, he will put out. Uh, SFTW. Yeah. It's an acronym. I was hoping so, because it doesn't spell anything. <laughs> yeah. I, I got lost midway through. Like, yeah. what it, it, it's an acronym for uh, Stay for the Weekend. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, I love a good fucking name. Yeah. And I it, love a good fucking catchy name. Stay for the Weekend. That song, it's a... Uh, it's kind of an R and B mixed with tech house. So okay. the, the vocals on it are very like laid back, very sensual, but the song itself is very dancey. Yeah. You kinda I feel like you have a I feel like you personally have a cheat code. And there are a lot of artists, DJs specifically, um, and producers that they make music, but they also not only can they operate whatever like software that you're using, but then you can sing. And so you get to add your own shit on there. I can't remember who, I was just watching some videos of some people making, what, Elenium maybe? I can't remember. There's, there's somebody else that I was watching. I didn't realize at the time, because when I listened to them, it was just like they happened to pop up on Spotify or a playlist or something. But then I watched them. They actually sang the vocals for the song yeah. and did all the shit themselves. And that's really dope, Like, because that probably will garner you more money you not having funny, to. Funny enough, I haven't sang in any of my music. What, bro? Yeah. yeah. Um, at least any of my, like, DJ Sunshine music. Yeah. I have uh, three albums out under just Sunshine on everything, and it's, like, old R&B that I used to make, and it's it's okay. This motherfucker's got layers, dog. Yeah, for real. He said, I've got three albums insane. out. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've got three albums. I'm like, fuck, dude, I got yeah, three I, felonies. Hey. <laughs> I, learned, uh, I learned production shit when I was 18, and like, I just enjoyed doing it, and I didn't have anybody to record vocals for. Like, yeah. I made all these beats, and I was like, I don't have anybody to record their singing. And so I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll do it. And yeah. then I ended up really enjoying it, so I released three albums. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured I liked it, so fuck it. Here's three albums. Yeah. Here's a three P off the just off a the love. Three P. Yeah, I uh, I used to make music, and that was something that I could never figure out. Like the production of it, my brain does not work like that. And like a couple of my friends that were engineers or producers would like kind of try to show me shit. And I mean, 20 minutes in, I'm getting up and I'm walking out. I just I, either I don't have the attention span for it, or I'm too stupid, or it's a combo of both. It's probably the combo. It's definitely a combo. But like what Jacob does, I mean, there's nothing. He could just be pressing buttons right now. He could be do. I mean, I have no idea what any of that shit is. So I think that that's really dope. <laughs> he goes to press a button. <laughs> He's just like fuck it. Just power turns off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. I think that that shit is dope, man. It's um, it took me a minute, and and it's tough because with production, you can you can fake it. You can fake your way into making music. Like you can use loops and so you can get a loop of a sound and just copy paste copy paste all the way across and yeah. then sing on top of it and then you're good to go and you can you can ship that off it's not going to sound good but you can fake it enough that you can you're trick people successful. into thinking you know what you're doing but i as i as i kept producing i i started recognizing oh okay this is what i'm doing that is not how the professionals do it and this is what i'm doing that's not how the professionals do it let me learn how the professionals do it and and now i know what i'm doing and i hate that i know what i'm doing now because it's such a pain in the ass yeah it's just a lot of uh a lot of really tedious little things that you're only i'm gonna notice and only people that have an ear for it are gonna notice yeah i was about to say that how much of a perfectionist are you now that it like too too much yeah too much i have probably three to four projects that could be posted right now that would sound great to people that don't know production mm -hmm. but i want to save face for the people that are like looking out for the professional stuff mm -hmm. and so i think i'll uh, starting right about now i'll be releasing probably once or twice a month yeah that's awesome yeah i feel that because just back on the show that we just came off of in kansas city um adam cook reached out to me sunday and today, really, he was like, hey, man, I appreciate you. You fucking killed it, man. As always, thank you. And I was like, I bombed. 
in my eyes, like I, there's a saying in comedy that a hard bomb is better than a soft kill. And that's just to say that like, I would rather completely tank and shit the bed than to do okay. And just like kind of have it pass. Like you said, you like the people, the crowd laughed, they enjoyed it, but I know what it was supposed to sound like. I know that I was supposed to pause for a little bit longer or accent or say something one way or the other that I didn't do. And the people like, and that's live. Like the the crowd got it, they enjoyed it, whatever. But I'm like, oh fuck, dude. They could have I could have added a little bit more. Like I could have just something yeah. a little bit extra. And I was really down on myself Sunday after the fact because I was like, man, we came all the way out here to Kansas City. It's not all the way out there, it's three hours, but we came all the way out here to Kansas City and just for me to give them a fucking B minus performance. Yeah. And they loved it. They wouldn't they wouldn't take it as that, but I took it like that. Yeah, sure. Well, so uh one time I played at a place called at Flux, which is an after hours club, it was my second time performing there. And I uh, made the mistake of like kind of bringing a shit ton of people and then being in charge of that shit ton of people. Mm. We rented an Airbnb and we had probably like 35 people from Wichita Jesus come out. To, oh, yeah. It's, it's a, you know, it's fun. Yeah. It's, hell yeah. It's, like I know 35 people. That's, my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my, your cousins. That's like my crew that when I travel, they, they come with me. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And, That's fucking and, shout out. Shout out loyal fucking fan base yeah, right there. They're my they're my good friends too. Like they come over to my house on Tuesdays for game nights and stuff. So it's, it's crazy. It's we never got time. an invite. It's wild. Yeah, it is. It you guys are really <laughs> I mean, I only just met you today, bro. I mean, <laughs> I, we could have. Yeah, uh, could have said something sooner. Yeah, he likes I, Scrabble. <laughs> I played in Oklahoma City uh, at that club, and I had the worst show. I I did the worst job I've ever done uh, on on a table, and it was because uh, so. I, I had just gotten into the habit of starting to memorize my sets and I had just memorized this hour long set, like knowing when to change songs and knowing what effects to put where, like, uh, this, the set I'm going to play for you on Friday, uh, next Friday is, um, is going to be completely memorized. Like I normally, uh, before I did that, I would have it written down on a piece of paper next to my table and just kind of glance over at it and go from there. But it was the first time I like memorized my set and I got up on the stage and forgot everything. Oh. And I hadn't written it down. And so I was like, uh, okay, fuck. Like I just got a I just got a free ball. And so I improvised a set and it was not good. None of it was good. And I was pissed. And when I got off the stage, people were like, ah, oh, that was such a fucking good set. Like, good job. And I was like, I need to go to my car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to go scream right now. Yeah. Somebody yeah. brought me chicken McNuggets and I was like, Single tier, <laughs> eating you know, them, uh, sweet and sour yeah. sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, actually, while, while we're on the topic, since we're getting to know you so well, when you get McNuggets, what's your sauce? It's sweet and sour. Yeah, it has oh, to be. Okay, yeah. okay. Has to be. Sweet and sour. Do you eat one whole nugget I guess at a time, a, or do you t- are two biter? I think I'm a two biter. You for have the to most be. Part. That's so weird. Yeah. I see people just chop, throw the whole thing in. This retard is who does that, dude. It's you, so you can't you can't throw the whole nugget in your mouth. What are you, a fucking animal? I'm throating him. I think yeah, it, that's I think sick. It, I think it depends on how hungry I am. Nah, you got to it no matter I'm getting what. a twenty, I will piece, say, bro. But you're you're like addicted. We found this out about Eric this weekend. I am <laughs> he, he, hey, we were talking about where to stop on the way up there, and he was like, "We just can't get McDonald's." And nah. I was like, "I thought it was like a quality issue." He was like, "I just don't want to. I don't want to put that I'll in go my on body." On McDonald's, he was like, "If I eat McDonald's today, I will go every day for it. I'll go on a bender. I will spiral out of control." I've never heard somebody use the words McDonald's <laughs> McDonald's <laughs> bender, and I was like, I, "What the fuck?" He's like, "I won't stop eating until I won't I'm stop. sick." I love McDonald's. Yeah, I love McDonald's. It's fucking good. That's yeah. why, like, if I get drunk, I have to delete DoorDash or yeah, DoorDash <laughs> off my phone. I have to not know where I am so I don't go to McDonald's because yeah, I will yeah. go and order thirty dollars worth of food, eat it all, wake up the next morning like, yeah. I mean, we're also, here. It's yeah. also way too convenient that yep. most of them are open twenty four hours. Yeah. So like, I'll get off work and it's two in the morning. Right. Fuck, I'm going straight there. Straight there. Straight there. God damn, it's so good. Hey, you know what? The since so we got we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of people's eyes on this Broadway and Walmart debacle. The, the, the Broadway, Broadway, and Pawnee. Broadway and Pawnee, my bad. Uh, I didn't drink today, so I'm a little bit normal. <laughs> As another Wichita debate, because you do tend to get off at the hours that you do being a club DJ. Yeah. Hey, Jacob, will you shut the fuck do up? You want me man? to go? Do you want me to go hit, hit him? Too? Yeah, go hit him. Just <laughs> like, you're the closest one to him. You're, if you were already in a corner, brother, we'd put you there. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting fired tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna lose our privileges let's, around let's, here. let's talk about the goat late night burrito joint. Who are you going with? 
You've got people like Renee's, Ricardo's, Renee's. Alejandro's. You're going with Renee's? Renee's. Renee's. Okay. So, Renee's. you know the West Acres Bowling Alley? Yeah. That was the first place I ever hosted karaoke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I would be... I live right by there. I would leave there, and I, I lived on the east side, and so I was passing by Renee's every time. Oh, yeah. So, I was like, oh, well, I got to. Yeah, yeah. Le- 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 legally required to at that point. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to sign a contract. After a certain hour, I mean... It's- exactly, exactly. Yeah, so the, it's the Renee zone, like Central and Two Thirty Five. Is that he, the one he's talking about in Wichita? Because yeah. there's a couple of them now. There's like the one on West Street. Yeah, there's one on West Street. Mm-hmm. I think there might be there might have been another one out on Thirteenth for a little bit. But yeah, that is the. <coughs> I mean, I grew up in that. That Renee's raised me. I have I have uh, something that could potentially top it, and I don't know if you guys know about it. We love top chicken, 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 chicken. Oh, I, I'm not up on this. Bro. Jacob, are you up on this chicken, chicken? No, bro. It's off of cent- uh, it's off of Thirteenth, just uh, east of uh, the one thirty five. Okay. Oh, are you talking about like the the little tiny shack, dude? Yes, I actually do. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's chicken, chicken, and it's like the place is literally the size of this mat, <laughs> and it's open till two in the morning. Is it next to like a tire shop? Yeah. Is it uh? Ooh, I do. I I know where it's at. I never they stop. Make, I make will the, never stop. Actually, they make the most fire fucking fried chicken I've ever had. Doesn't make me shit my pants. Ooh, well, that's that's a good that's sell. a that's a really good selling point because you see a place like that, like it, you you've it's driven, scary. you've one hundred percent driven past it, and you're yeah. like you'll be like, Mm-mm. yeah, <laughs> no way, I don't trust that. But every time I've gone, really good price, really like crispy chicken, mm. really crispy fried chicken. Probably Ju- seasoned like a motherfucker Dude, too. You can get the Cajun, you Ooh, can get like Cajun yeah. fries with it. You can get like an eight piece chicken tender meal with a fat amount of fries for like nine bucks. Oh, that's insane! Oh, that's insane! Open till two in the open till two in the morning. Have they heard about inflation? I mean, do they know about this, dude? <laughs> not that, not not the chick, not chicken, chicken. I met, not chicken, chicken. I met the inflation owner. does not exist. The chicken, I met chicken. the owner. Drives a nice ass car. License plate says chicken, chicken. I no said, way. I said, dude, your chicken fucks. And he goes, a thank you, a thank you, and a thank you. And that's I was hard. Like, I was Dang. like, that's all I needed. That's all go, I needed. We gotta go for a sponsorship there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, chicken, chicken, please sponsor us. Uh, no, they're not. Okay. You can you can pay with card. Yeah. yeah. Last time I went, it was either their card machine was down or they were cash only. Mm. Damn. But yeah. Chicken. Shout, shout out chicken. 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 Shout out chicken. Chicken. Fuck dude. it, dude. I don't know. Late night though, I gotta put in on this one. Roadrunner. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if, if we had to have like Roadrunner, but Runner, I don't think you live close to one. Mm. Yeah. It, the what? There's Derby and yeah, there's, then Pawnee and Oliver. And there's Maze in like '96. Damn okay. near. Um, but if you had to put like Alejandro's, Renee's, Alejandro, and, and Roadrunner all together, oh yeah, no, nah. Roadrunner's coming out. Mm. Like I said, I grew up. I mean, Renee is literally like because I I'm the the Renee's that's on the west side of Wichita. I'm a west sider forever. West side Wichita like has me, and we. I mean, having graduated from Northwest, like that's just the area. If you know, you know. And so that was just one thing that was super close. So people, you always used to tell me about Alejandro's, but I'm like, why would I drive? 20 minutes or you know what I mean people are drinking it used to happen shit. on the west side for, for a real? little bit damn I didn't even know that for real I must have been asleep as a west I'm all this west side shit I don't even know I, I, I was just too loyal to I was just too loyal to Renee's you know what I mean um but I will say that I gave Roadrunner a try like in the last two years oh my fucking god dog honorable mention Ricardo's just because of they like so many of the, the, the burrito joints they do the fry style like mm. potatoes, they do like almost wedges at Ricardo's and it's it just hits different it's just different fam <laughs> nah. We just had to get your take on that sunshine. You know what I mean? As as a couple of late night entertainers ourselves, to another late night entertainer, like as a traveler though, Whataburger. Whoa. Get the fuck out of God my face! God damn it! Fuck! I almost liked you. I almost had a crush on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? We're not. We're not. Whataburger. Fans of Whataburger. <laughs> Whataburger can suck my dick. Why? Uh, Whataburger just trash. <laughs> just go to Burger King if you want Whataburger. Go to, just Burger, go to Burger King. King. It's a orange Burger King. Yeah, that's it what is, it is. For Ooh, real. They make the fat God. burgers though. You almost had me. Say that again. Uh, so that's on good. That's on good. On good, bro. Seriously, I. God so, damn it. it! It might just be because like I'm from Arizona and they're all over the place there. Mm. You don't have in and out there. You don't, don't have in and out there. In and out so much better. In and out, but in and out closes at one. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Whataburger is 24 hours. Yeah, they are. The first time I didn't even have Whataburger until I was in South Padre Island, and we our hotel was like right next to it. What am I gonna do? Not go there. That, that, that's what happened. I was. I mean, I was way young, but our hotel. It was in Dallas. Our hotel. Shared a parking lot with that water burger. Yeah. So me and my dad, we got there like, yeah, two, three in the morning. He's like, you just want to fucking walk down there? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. Yeah. We went. I'm like, this is Burger King. 
<laughs> it is, bro. It is. Yeah. And well, I, I so like there is a bunch out there. Spice I mean, ketchup. I'll give you that one. Yeah. I'll I give think, you spice I was gonna ketchup. say they got they got spice right because you get that the sweet and spicy bacon burger at Whataburger and the spice is like. I feel that. Nice. I feel that. I'm not. I'm not completely hating on him. I just there's always been so much of an in and out versus Whataburger debate. I'm on in and out, and I'm on the in and out side. Porque no dos. <laughs> yeah, that's not around here. Yeah. We're we're divided. We're a house divided. <laughs> yeah. We're a house divided. Yeah. If I had to choose between the two, in and out burger wins every day. But the late night aspect of it, I that definitely adds. understand. That adds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And in and out's not that expensive either. No, in and out, all things in-N-Out's considered, like four dollars a burger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. when was last time I last time I, for New Year's I went to Austin. Yeah. I had in and out. I was in there for four days. Austin? Yeah, I went three times. Oh shit! It was and it was big in Texas. Yeah, it's huge. It's all over the place. Mm. But my family is from my dad's side of my family is from California. They're mm. all from the West Coast, and so like every time we'd go out there as a kid, we that was like our first stop off the plane or off, whatever. We like we got to go to In and Out. Yep. Immediately, and we I grew up without those fucking t-shirts and shit. I mean, they're so yeah. I've never seen nobody rocking Whataburger merch out. You know what I mean? There's never. no old guys at Corvette meets with Whataburger shirts. It's in never. and out. Yep, always in and out. Uh, I will say that like my my mom and dad live in Arizona still, and my dad will send me photos of him eating in and out burger, and he'll be like, "Bet you wish you had this." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, "I do." I'm like, "Yes, yeah, I do." We did just get a Dutch Bros though. Here. Yeah. We had a couple cool. of them. Yeah, they're, dude, they're exploding mm-hmm. too. Um, they're fucking good. Never been. I had never, you had never had them? Nope. Dude, you Very like coffee. Good. You have to get Dutch Bros. Um, I waited for a long time because I was a Starbucks bitch, for real. I swear to God. I'm no. a Dunkin' girl. I'm a Dunkin' girl. <laughs> I, like, all right, Dunkin's, I love I, Dunkin's black coffee smacks. I did not think that yeah, coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know coffee was going to end yeah. that sentence. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was going to say, I don't even want to say what I thought it was going to say. I don't want to lose. <laughs> we're, we're on thin ice with TikTok right now. I don't want to make it oh any fucking God. thinner. <laughs> um, no, nah, dude, yeah. What do they have? The, the, the Golden Eagle from Dutch Bros? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Like, I'm a chai guy. Yeah. That's my problem is I love me some chai. I fucking, you know what I mean? Say what you want. It goes. Well, and even if you're not in the mood for coffee, they have, like, the energy drinks. Yeah. They make energy drinks. Yeah, they have their like, own. Yeah, so they have like a Dutch Red Bull type thing, mm-hmm. and they they throw two of them in a big cup, and then they flavor it for you. Jesus yeah, Christ. It's it's so like, good, like a smoothie type shit. Sometimes it's dope. It's dope. You gotta go. We'll go after this. Uh, we won't go after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get a coffee at fucking five eight five p.m. We'll get three espresso shots. Be up till fucking three in the morning. Honestly, though, I kind of feel bad talking about Dutch Bros right now. Well, we got Buffalo Brew upstairs. I've seen Jacob look over like three times. Like you guys better watch what the fuck you say. Yeah, man, we ride for Buffalo Brew. Yeah, we ride for Buffalo Brew. <laughs> Dutch Brooks can suck my ass. <laughs> All right, we're getting banned. <laughs> there goes that fucking sponsorship. <laughs> um, I didn't know that they were a bigger thing, like, outside of Wichita. Yeah. Until they came to town, and people, I mean, the line was around the fucking mm-hmm. block. But Yeah, there's a, I know of five in Arizona, and they just... They're so good. Oh, they're doing numbers. Yeah. I mean, if you know a five of them, if, any, if there's five of anything, you're doing great. Yeah. yeah. And I know like, five McDonald's. <laughs> I had a, one of my buddies uh, from high school and I would go after school like every fucking day because everybody would go from school to Dutch. And then they're the one that we would go to. You could like hang out inside. Yeah. Because all these ones are like drive-thrus. drive-thrus. Yeah. You could go inside this one and just chill. Oh, wow. Yeah. They had a hangout. It was like a like a daytime club. It was cool. What's your thought on Seven Brew? Seven Brew's all right. Yeah, so that was another thing that we just got. I think the only one that we have is, is it still the one that's out east? Yeah. Or it's on it's Central and Hillside or Central something? Hillside. They got two. They, they got one at uh, Douglas and Rock. Okay. I I remember one of my... Oh, old, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my old coworkers was talking about, I'm about to go work for this Seven Brew. And I was like, I don't know. What was, I never fucking heard of that. She's like, it's new. They're coming from out of town. I still have yet to make it there because Wichita, for some reason... Wichita, we love coffee, coffee they and coffee beer. As fuck. We we have a lot of roasteries, like ro- like coffee spots, and then we also have a lot of breweries. Like we are, we are. I feel like our main exports are like coffee, meth, <laughs> 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 meth, and then beer. You know what I mean? We got Norton's it's a good balance. We got uh, gar- the hopping gnome. uppers and downers. Yeah, facts. You gotta it's have. Perfect. It's all about balance. Okay, yeah. real quick too. Arizona, have you been to Bikini Bean? <laughs> No. As a coffee spot, yeah, I figured bikinis. Bikini. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you take the Twin Peaks the concept, right but mix it with Starbucks. I put a two piece on right now. You call me Bikini Bean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'm done for the day. Oh Christ. Um. So you said you have two singles though. Let's get let's before because we're going way off. We're we're just sound really. <laughs> we're just, just talking food. Yeah, this sounds like the fattest podcast ever. So we got the stay for the weekend. You said that you have two singles dropping on that day. No, not on the same day. So April April eighteenth is the uh, single in uh, preview to my new EP. Okay. So I'm going to be dropping a five-song EP uh, sometime this summer that I haven't announced yet. And um, It's an exclusive. Yeah. yeah. A Running the Light exclusive. It's going to be a sunshine summer. That's what we're trying to say. But this is this is that one. And we have rights. We can play this, right? We're not going to get banned yeah, for this? Yeah, I was about to say, do we, we have rights to this? Yeah. All right. You're go. fine. I'm trying to get banned on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this will come out April 18th, but I'm going to play it at the final Friday show. Oh, yeah. We get an exclusive. We get an exclusive. We get an exclusive first play through the Element Fives at Tribal Roots. They're, well, if you know sound and you know how fucking badass Element Fives are, like, I, I, I never was really too into it. You know, we hit you with that brand new funk. That dirty, dirty type of funk. I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that. We gotta get it. We gotta get sunshine on the intro. Yeah, I'm about to black out. I'm about to start getting nasty. I'm about to start getting sweaty. I'm about to start getting sweaty. Just start rubbing on this chair. Uh, so when, we might have to commission you for our new intro song. That'd be fine. I could do that. I'm serious, dude. Um, so for the Rafiki show that they just had, yep. I showed up for sound check. To Did you say Rikishi? To Rafiki. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up for sound check because I wanted to hear that on the speakers. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, that, <laughs> it's different, oh bro. Oh, my God. They're, the sound system, Shay West, the guy that runs Tribal Roots, him and his, his wife, Rochelle, they run it. They have like some of my utmost respect as far as like venue owners go in Wichita because they have put so much money back into the back into the room. Mm. The lights, laser, I mean, everything. Mm. Lights and sound is godly. And I never had even heard Element 5s. Like, I've been to a few festivals before. I've been to a bunch of shows and never, like, really could make it, like, tell a difference or, like, paid attention to it. But they have been vocal about the Element 5s. And I've stood next, I mean, I've stood pretty close to them with no earplugs. So because there's seven in existence, two in the United States, one in Wichita. Yeah, for Jeez, for really? a fucking. Have you have you ever seen these? Nah, dude, I stood next to them, and you know this shit too. I stood next to them. You feel a shortness of breath. Yeah, it dude, like it Jesus moves Christ. your fucking skeleton inside your body. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so I, I always give a lot of props to them. Like that's why I'm really excited to do this show with Tribal Roots because they put so much money and time and care into curating the best possible experience for the audience. And that's what we try to do. You know what I mean? As comedians, and I don't mean to shit talk other comedians, but I am. There's a lot of fucking comics out here that don't give a shit about the quality of their show. They don't, you know, they don't put audio money up. sounds like shit. Audio sounds like the, the flyers suck. You know what I mean? And lighting we, sucks. This is Eric and I have been. I guess we've been doing comedy together for like f almost five years, and one thing that we have always stood on is we will not put out a shitty flyer. I will not be on a shitty flyer. Yeah. I've been on like two or three shitty flyers. I'm like, dude. Shitty flyer, shitty show. Shitty flyer, shitty show, dude. That's I all it stand is. on that. Yeah. Because if you don't care to fucking put fifty dollars on or a flyer, or you know, have because I can't do it. I don't make that shit. Eric can make flyers. That's not my area of expertise. I'll let somebody who's better at it make it. But what I won't do is put out a shitty fuck. Like I, that's why I don't do it because it would be a shitty fucking flyer. I'd rather have Eric make it or shout out Kevin Page. He he makes them too. Like my homegirl Alexis Miller, fucking goat. Jacob made a few for me. Jacob makes some fucking bangers too. But I mean that is a, a wizard right there. Yeah, you know what I mean that I is. I've turned people's flyers down. Where yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah, we got it. Yeah, this day, here's your flyer. And I go, nah. Mm -mm, I'm yeah. going to just make my own. Yep. Yeah, literally. I'll like try to all commission one of my friends or something to make a better one because it's a, that's the first impression for people on that or for, for that event. Like, it's people are see the that. initial vibe. Yep. Yeah. Like, you oh, know. wow, this looks like it was made on fucking Microsoft <clears throat> Paint. I'm not going to go to this. Well, like, one thing is uh, like color, uh -oh. color theory is big. So like pink 
is a really calming color. Mm-hmm. So if you do like a like a pale pink, you're giving out like a calm energy to the show. So if I'm doing like a coffee house show where I'm playing deep house and more like jazzy type stuff on the tables, I'm gonna use like a pale pink to get that calm energy out yeah. and say, hey, like if you want something that's gonna be chill and a good time, come come to this. Yeah. And people that are looking for that are gonna be like, oh, this seems right up my alley. And it's not because of What's it says on the flyer? It's how the flyer looks. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter who's on it. If the flyer looks like shit, I just I. That's one thing that him and I have always stood on. We just had this conversation on the way back from Kansas City. Is like, yeah, I will I will refuse. I will refuse to share show. a shitty flyer. Um, I don't even know what the fuck I got on that topic for. I don't remember there. But yeah, we were just talking about dude. dude I didn't know that there was only two Element Five systems in America. And one of them is at, yeah, one of the best places that I've ever performed at. And this is another reason, like, I love EDM. Eric, not so I've much. I've never been. He's, he's not the biggest, you know what I mean? But he loves he loves me, so he's going to be out there. Are you, like, what kind of music do you like? I'm basic, dude. What I, do you like? I like, uh... No he, likes, he loves when it SZA. Comes, when it comes he loves, I love SZA. He loves SZA. 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 SZA fox. If SZA, I want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, SZA, where you at? <laughs> uh, dude, I, that's the only reason I'm doing this podcast. Hopefully we launch off. Yeah. I'm yeah. in SZA's yeah. DMs. Yeah. I can, He's already you know, in her DMs she now. She just released something new. Yep. Right? Saturn. What was it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Homie is a hey. legitimate fan. And I, I, I love her. I fucking she, love Glorilla and Doja Cat. He's a... Who, her flow what do we is fire. Yeah. Her beats are fire. Her voice uh, is like an angel. Every feature yeah. she has is, that's that's is really crazy solid. fast. <laughs> that's that, that, Beautiful eyes. That's that TDE shit, man. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. Anyways. I don't think that's uh, big. Big Drake fan. Yeah. Drake Fox. Yeah. He does. Re- <laughs> Apparently. Does he? There's a does reason. He? I, you <laughs> know, I've gone out of my way to not see that photo. I've gone out of you my way to not see the photo. Sure, sure. I haven't, oh, dude. Wow. He hey, said I'm yes. the same way. He asked me, he was like, Did you see did you see Drake's video? And I was like, You mean the one of his dick? No, I I never put that into yeah, my Google search. I didn't yeah. And the next week he was like, dude, Bad Bunny's dick was on Instagram. Did you see it? And I was like, I don't know how you even are finding are you seeking these dicks out or are they they're just put- on Twitter. Yeah. They just pop up. I woke up Tuesday morning and I was like, Why That's porn I had it's on a porno site now. This is no longer a, a, a kid friendly show. And all oh, okay. It's not even it's not even all the way hard. Oh. What are we doing, bro? Video's done now. Video's done. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see it again? No, I'm, I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. Me oh, and Drake. Wait. I don't. I don't want to go. I don't want to. No, 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 no. That this is the goat. Oh, don't make me do it. No, 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 I think Drake's a good good artist though. Uh, there's a reason why he has so many like songs in the top 40s. Oh know? yeah, that is one of my fucking favorite people. I will say, like it, it. There was a meme that was like, "There's nobody worse than a dude on their birthday listening to Drake," and I am that. Me. I am yeah. that person every year. I play God's Plan every birthday, and I, if there's a table around me, I'm standing on top of it. Yep. It Absolutely. does not matter. I can't. I don't know why. Going bro. bad with Meek Mill. Meek Mill. But like, well, so what? How old are you? 24. Okay, so you're even younger than us. I graduated in 2014, and I got to see a lot of Drake coming up, like, through late middle school and high school. He, like, curated the whole vibes for our fuck. And then we had 2 chains coming yeah. out and shit. So I feel like I just grew up with more Drake, and, like, yeah, he just, dude just speaks to me. Yep. I was also saying about because, like, I like Juice World. But I would never be like, oh, I'm a big fan of Juice World. But if you tell, because him and my girl both are graduated in 2016, and a lot of my friends that graduated in that, like 2016, 2017, what, like two years will do. Two years, yeah. literally, like the whole thing, the whole scene shifted. Because if I tell him, or like both of them, they both, him and my girl, are the same age and love Juice World. And a lot of my friends that graduated in 2016 just grew up with like Peep, Juice World. It was just like that just era. Just sad music. Yeah, just well, sad. But it was good fucking you look music. look at the, the 2016 Double XL newbies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Had Lil Uzi. Yeah. XXX. Lil Yachty. Yeah. Like a lot of those people fall under the uh, whiny. Yeah. Whiny yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that genre. <clears throat> Jacob, yeah. we about to say something? 
Put some respect on their name, please. They're fucking, <laughs> they're, they're fucking great. Not, they're great, and they're, they're you... great artists, but it, I just felt like by the time that they came around, I was already like 22, 23. We're still, yeah. I don't know. And it's very different from what was popular before. It was a, or we're like, what's it popular? Is, it was a really now, two big, years after it was I graduated. a really I was big like, shift. Yeah, Yo, it, it was a really it, big shift. Um, but yeah, it, um, Drake Drake is interesting because he kind of just always remains a classic mm -hmm. with whatever he puts out. Mm -hmm. It's in you know every album you there's iconic shit in every single. Yeah, album. Hotline Bling when it came out did like more numbers than fucking God, dude. It was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, he, I think I think more I think there were more copies of Hotline Bling sold in the Bible. I don't know, Jacob. You looked that up. Pretty Google sure. That Google that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob, pull it up. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, I what? think Kendrick is the goat. Oh, whoa! Wow. Why and do you think say Kendrick that? is the greatest of all time? And this motherfucker is like Waterburger and Kendrick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's just take we're, off. We're on gonna him. fist fight. We're yeah. gonna yeah. I should have asked night. these questions beforehand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, the next guest is. I'm gonna. We gotta. We gotta have. How a, do you feel about Drake and Waterburger? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick is a goat because he's like one of the last remaining true MCs. Okay, okay. Because <clears throat> there's a difference between a rapper and an MC. I, I guess I mean we all look. Obviously, this is all subjective. Yeah, we view it personal opinions. Yeah, I mean Drake is the best, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, you look at it as a, it, you know an MC when it comes to catchy shit. But if you're trying to feel something, I don't know. With I, Drake, I, Drake, Drake releases bangers now. Yeah, and it's like you can play them in a club and they slap. You can't really. You can play some old Kendrick, but you can't yeah. play a whole lot of new shit by him. Yeah, though. it is. I feel like he got. Well, again, like when shit like a uh, fucking problem was coming out. I mean, that was like what 2012, I think 2013 mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. And that was like the whole energy. We got no live with Drake and Two Chains, and then all those guys uh, at Kendrick Two were on fucking problem. I feel like that is the era of like you can play that shit in the club and it's gonna go. But then, but you see how he he repeatedly sticks out from those names, right? Mm -hmm. Every time Kendrick is on as a feature, he throws down some crazy shit. Yeah. Oh no, he's <laughs> he's because his fucking flow talented. Is, his flow is really unique. In, yeah. in the way he raps. And it's just solid stuff. I respect that. He's, he's, a, good, business. he's a really good storyteller in, yeah. his, in his work. That's why, like, I, I like Drake for more hype shit just because, like, I tend to be... I'm a white girl inside. Like, I'm half Mexican, half white girl. At, <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. But I feel like uh, J. Cole, I'm more, like, if I, if I would put the three of them head-to-head, -head, I'm going to go with J. Cole, personally. Okay. Um, I like... Because I, I feel like he is the line between... Kendrick and J. Cole, where as far as like his storytelling is insane, but he also is like rapping hype enough on like the yeah. Drake side of that. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. That's me personally. But enough rappers. Let's talk DJs. Um, give me like your top three to five dudes that are out working in the game right now. You mean like local or just entirely? Whoever. Because some of my favorite comedians are my friends. Like, <clears throat> I, like I would put some of my friends in my top 10 favorite comics of all time so you know what i mean and it would help to shout out i mean some local people people that don't like our viewers our listeners that are around here that don't know might not know dj sunshine they just heard that yeah. and they're gonna see him at final friday at tribal roots but who yeah. else would you shout yes. out like in general i just started <clears throat> getting on the dom dollar super late i know do not fucking criticize me i'm the dollar store dom dollar <laughs> <laughs> i like that i look like his bitch ass but i'm you know yeah this guy but you're uh, not english He's Australian. Fuck, that's yeah, worse. That's racist. What, wow. they, they sound close to fuck wow. enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris Lorenzo, he's one of my favorites. He makes really good music. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy Chris Lorenzo. And I saw him at the Super Unnatural Festival in Arizona, and he waved at me. So there's that. That's you were just <laughs> waving at the crowd. Yeah. 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 I was he, like, he made eye contact. Yeah, yeah. He's talking to me. Well, uh, I would say. Uh, I'll list off some of my favorite like locals. Go crazy, then, bro. This is your time. Go, like, I feel like we've been talking a shit <clears throat> time. We fuck with you, so like it's more casual conversation. But I do want to give you the floor. Like, go go crazy. Uh, Marco Biotics, he's the OG. Yeah, and that motherfucker, <laughs> legend. We, I think we were trying to get him for the final fighter show. And we couldn't. So I, I, uh, hope to, I hope to see him because soon. the two of us play at X. Oh y. yeah, no shit. You yeah. said that. Okay. Yeah, we play X Y uh, same night, but you go to the Tribal Roots show. Go to the Tribal Roots show. Um, but Marco Biotics, he fucks. Always, um, Bloodsport. He's a local uh, techno producer and DJ. He and I put on the Secret Show. Okay. Uh, Secret Show is an underground techno show that we put on bi-monthly. So once every other month. You need to know 
who to know in order to get in. It's pretty cool. Um, we got one coming up April 26th. Um, follow me on socials so that you can get that information. But blood sports, probably my, uh, one of my favorites, Marco biotics, uh, DJ LOL, super awesome dude. Yeah. Super awesome. DJ, uh, Zeb, the DJ. Well, I mean, all the DJs that work the downtown circuit. I was going to say, I think me and Zeb just got tied in on socials. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cool dude. He's smart, smart dude. I do hear a lot of, a lot about Marco. Um, Shay, who runs, uh, tribal roots asked, because we were getting kind of collaborative on who to bring out. I wanted to bring the comedians, and then I wanted to kind of leave, and then I wanted Sunshine, but I wanted the ball to be in his court a little bit about what DJs do you want to bring, because he knows Tribal Roots. He knows what we, what we want to bring there, and to mesh with you well also. Yeah. And he was talking about doing <clears throat> Marco Biotics, so I'm hoping, you know what I mean, maybe down the road we can get something going together, because I love doing, I guess I love EDM, and the community of it is like so. I mean, they they go hard. So yeah. and a lot of the like, well, our I, people that support our comedy, they come out to almost every show. And I wanted to say thank you again for even considering me, because it's cool that that you specifically asked for me. It was really nice of you, dude. Well, okay. So again, one, I've known you for a long time, and I've seen you in different rooms. You know what I mean? Like I met I met you at at karaoke at, at karaoke. And at, you were at West Acres. You were at Rain. I've just seen you. You're able to get in. You're not just like a one lane person. You know what I mean? You're able to kind of curate a vibe wherever we put you. And I'm. I feel like me and Eric do the same shit. You know what I mean? As far as like, like we've done comedy in some all types of fucking rooms. I've done comedy in a basement. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was. I mean, he was at. He was <clears throat> chained to a wall. Basically. Yeah. 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 For happens. a company party in a basement in front of. 20, 25, 30 people. Oh, yeah. Wow. A corporate yeah. event. You we, we were like five months in. I was, yeah, literally five months yeah, in. I started, started in June and I mean Christmas party. So it was like in December. Yeah. Okay. I've DJed hard techno in a basement. So I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, dude. And then the day you like you already were on when we did our first tribal roots, when they had us do comedy for the first time. But you're a solid motherfucker. And again, like, and this is nothing against any of people that are in their 30s or 40s that are still slaying shit, like, do your thing. I'm just saying, like, I like working with Eric. I like working with people that are just in my age range because it feels like we're a lot closer on the wavelength. Mm. We're going to have the same demographic. We're going to match. We're going to, like, mesh together better. And, dude, you're a fucking kick-ass DJ. So I'm really excited to have you on this fucking show. And hopefully it'll be, you know, one of many that we get going. Summer is going to be crazy. March is booked like a motherfucker, but... It's only spring, you know what I mean? It's gonna be it's gonna be a yeah. summer full of sunshine, baby. Yeah. yeah. You were just talking about follow you on socials to get brought into the you know, secret find show. information, the secret show. Where can they find you at? Oh, uh Instagram at DJ Sunshine, DJ underscore sun underscore shine, mm-hmm. uh, DJ Sunshine on Facebook, DJ Sunshine Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, Deezer, Amazon Music. Every every music platform you can imagine, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Just look up DJ Sunshine, you'll find me. Yeah, that's what I always say. I was like, if you Google a Frankie Miracle, I promise you, I'm the only one. Yeah. So that would be where you can find It'd him on socials. The to stay. only other uh, DJ Sunshine's in Jamaica, so yeah, and well, that makes sense. She's, she's, black, <laughs> she's a black woman, so yeah, it's you know. easy to tell you guys apart, right? You, kind of. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I can see it. Uh, <laughs> Eric, where can they find you on socials, man? Uh, at Eric Zayas one on everything, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Eric Zayas, E R I C K Z A Y A S one. You never fail to spell it out. People don't know how to fucking I'll, spell my name. It's on the fucking. It's on the page. Well, people. It's don't know. on the fuck. It's on every page we have. People don't know. I was talking to Lee about that shit. I was like, I love that. As we close every show, you never fail. E R I C K Z A Y A S one. <laughs> Why not? You see what I'm I saying? get it. I get it. Thank you. Thank hey. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just, this just, motherfucker's just, thorough. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Oh, so that's two on one now. I'm, I'm, trying, so I'm I, trying to get it to so DMs, I've and got, I need a. I've got two accounts. I've got one that's a personal account. It's <laughs> DJ Sunshine underscore, and then my business account is DJ underscore Sun underscore Shine. So the, the so <laughs> if I tell you to look up DJ Sunshine. Both of them come up. One of them has my business logo. One of them has a picture of my face. 
And it's hard to tell the difference between the two. Follow both. Yeah, follow both. Yeah, follow, them. Both. Fuck it. follow everything. Follow them home. The follow personal them to the is, <laughs> Personal page is modeling stuff. And then the DJ underscore sun underscore shine is all DJing related. Shit. Are you a model? We're about out of time. Are you a model? Yeah. We didn't God get what the it, fuck, dude. dude. This dude does everything, bro. I, fu- I hate him. We gotta step <laughs> <laughs> We gotta step our fucking game up. Jacob Clark, our lovely producer. Man, where can they find you on socials, dog? At I gotta spell it out. Thank you. Oh fuck, dude. This. I, I, J the letter J C L A R K dot J P G. Because if I just said J Clark dot J P G, they're gonna type it out. Yeah, they J-A-Y. would. I would, need to, I would hope they would type it out. You need yeah. to spell it. Well, yeah, they're gonna type out J A Y. I'm not I'm spelling not. my shit. Fuck y'all. If you can't spell my shit, fuck you. But man. what if it's Frankie with the Y? You see oh, what I'm saying? Fuck. That's, that's if it, it. Okay, if it was Frankie with the Y, I would be, uh, you know what I mean, deported. But nah. Uh, shout out the uh, shout out the Commerce Club for having us out here. Or allowing us this beautiful studio to bring amazing people and shine a light to everybody. What the fuck? I hate you. Dude, dick swinging, bro. <laughs> what is he, Drake? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a beautiful it's a beautiful white man we got here. Um, you can find me everywhere, Frankie's Miracle. Uh, we want to shout out a couple of our sponsors real quick because we are running out of time. We want to shout out Cowboy Revolution for hats just like this and the one on Eric's Chrome Dome he's got. And they just dropped a new line, so make sure you guys check those out. Follow them on Instagram and all the other socials, Cowboy Revolution. Use promo code Running the Light Pod. Just kidding, just Running the Light. For 15% off, we got bills to pay. Yeah. Uh, court fees to pay. Don't forget that. So we could try to get a little, little, little change in our pockets. Use promo code Running the Light. And we just uh, we just picked up a, another individual. It'll be all things hype. This hat right here, and the shirt that he's got on just got released. So hype you can find the uh, hype department. Fun hype fact, department. I designed that. Dang. Shout out Jacob Clark. You see, what I'm see? multifaceted, talented motherfuckers in this room. We don't man. have just average Joes around here. Yeah, ain't no average Jacobs around here. Uh, so shout out all things hype. Downtown Wichita, you look up look them up on Instagram, you will find them. They got sneakers, they got a tattoo shop, I think they got a barber shop, they got a, I mean, a smoke shop. It's a it's a it's another one of those things where just a bunch of stuff packed into one, you know what I mean? Much like our amazing friend Sunshine here. Um so shout out to Commerce Club, Cabo Revolution, all things high, Jacob Clark, Sunshine, thank you for coming out. You can find us all together in the same room. Tribal Roots Warehouse, final Friday. That'll be March 29th, 6 p.m. to midnight. It is going to be a long one, and it's going to be a good one. So, uh, I, I mean, I think that we've got everything covered. I don't really got much more to put in here. $10 tickets. Yeah, tickets are $10, and it is 18 to enter. Typically, at Tribal Roots, it is 21 to enter, but it being a final Friday event, if you're not from Wichita listening to this, final Fridays here are like a really art-centric day. We just kind of try to promote, you know, all arts. And so that's why we've got... DJs, co- comedians, the homie Christian Manal is going to be doing magic out there. Like, I can't fucking wait to see some magic. He is so dude, he's fucking so, good. He's I'm hilarious. So and he's, yeah, he's fool. funny. He does like comedy while he's doing magic, which seems like, I mean, come on, let's save some pussy for the rest of us. Facts. Honest. I'm already having problems with it. <laughs> and you're going to be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now nah, he's going to be there. You're fucked. I'm fucked. Yeah, Fellas, what are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, we just, uh, another good episode. We want to shout everybody out. Hopefully, we'll see you at Tribal Roots, man. Hit that music, DJ. Peace, follow the show.